Here's what we've got for you on this edition of Sports Night. Nebraska reigns on the Cats' homecoming parade in a tale of two halves. The men's basketball team shows off its brand new look in an inter-squad scrimmage. And Northwestern Volleyball's new talent is turning some heads. It's Sports Night. Right now. Welcome on into Sports Night, everybody. I'm Brandon Wilson. He's Noah Fromson, and you came to the right place because we have one heck of a show tonight, don't we, Noah? That's right, Brandon, and it all started on the gridiron. You can ask anyone, and they'll tell you the same thing. The worst possible way to lose a football game is on a Hail Mary pass, and last season at the hands of Nebraska, the Northwestern football team suffered that same terrible fate. Now one year later, the Huskers traveled to Evanston, where they met up with a Wildcat squad hungry for one thing, Revenge. And no better time for revenge than in front of a sold out crowd at Ryan Field. Under the lights, the homecoming spirit had the place bumping as the game got underway. Northwestern driving in the first quarter, and the freshman phenom, Justin Jackson, takes the handoff and breaks one at the outside, speeds down the line until he's pushed out by Nate Gray, 27 yard gain and a first down. Same drive now on first and goal with just under six to go. Jackson, another carry and he punches it in from two yards out. Cats take a seven nothing lead. But on the ensuing Nebraska drive, Drew Brown trying to tack on three. Oh! The field goal attempt is wide right. The score would remain 7-0 at the end of the first. Second quarter, five minutes gone. Amir Abdullah, no one's stopping him. Game tied at seven. But five drives later, Justin Jackson gets the carry and whoop, makes Josh Mitchell looks silly. This, that TD was his second. He finished with 128 yards and you up 14-7. However, Nebraska would respond on the next play, a run left. Oh, wait, it's a double reverse, actually, and Tommy Armstrong is going to catch the touchdown pass from DeMornay Pearson L. Even our videographer bit on the play fake tie game. Haven't seen much of Simeon yet, but he's going to find Trayvon Green there. That 23-yard reception will lead to Northwestern field goal, 17-14, Cats at the break. Now we'll fast forward to 427 left in the third. First and goal from the one, Abdullah. No doubt about it. The Huskers took a four-point lead, and they, then it would be all red from there. Opening drive in the fourth quarter. Now we see why Amir Abdullah is in the Heisman conversation. He slices up Northwestern's defense. Easy. Nobody even lays a hand on this guy until Jimmy Hall takes him down at the one-yard line. He would walk in for the third touchdown, and the Corn Huskers open a 28-17 lead. Now midway through the fourth quarter, Armstrong play fake to Abdullah. He hurdles the defense and rushes it in, but the call would be overturned, and you guessed it, Abdullah finished the drive with his fourth TD. They would get one more field goal, and Nebraska spoils Northwestern's homecoming by a final score of 38-17. to And Amir Abdullah just absolutely ripped Northwestern apart, 146 yards on four touchdowns. And for Northwestern, Simeon, yet another poor showing, 18-39, a 46% completion rate, no touchdowns, and one handout in this homecoming bust. Our Mike Marut has this reaction. Tonight was a big night. Homecoming. The first night under the lights for Northwestern, facing off against the other end in the Big Ten, Nebraska. It was a game of oohs and ahs, but more oohs for the Cornhuskers and ahs for the Wildcats. Obviously a tale of two halves. I thought uh, the way we started the game and, and the way that we finished the half with our offense responded after uh, a terrible two-minute drive by our defense, uh, gave us really solid momentum into, into halftime, uh, and then just... Um, just kind of had a little bit of attrition offensively. Amir Abdullah made Nebraska football history by getting 1,000 yards, the first running back to have three 1,000-yard seasons in Nebraska football history. I, I wouldn't say it's frustration. I I'd say it's more, more fuel to our fire because we still have games left, I mean, in the season. We still have a lot of Big Ten games that, that we're looking forward to. I mean, our goals are still, still in check. I mean... We just have to fix those things. We have to be able to make those big plays. Northwestern has two weeks to figure out a game plan against Iowa. Reporting for Sports Night, this is Mike Marut. We're now joined by Inside NU's Jason Doro. He came to talk some football with me, which of course gets me excited as always. Jason, 
welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, Jason, my first question for you, as a fan, you probably couldn't help but get excited getting out to a three-point lead going into the half, all eyes on the Cats, big game, homecoming game. My question is, what happened in the second half? W was it a, a philosophical thing from a play-calling standpoint? Was it a lack of execution? What accounts for that abysmal offensive performance in the second half? Well, I wouldn't say it was a play-calling change. The Cats were still their typical offense, running short screens, short passing routes. Justin Jackson still got a fair amount of carries. And that didn't work out right away. They had two three and outs to start the second half. Then they had three three sacks in these ensuing drives and a couple of false starts, which turned out to be major drive killers. Luck wasn't their way. And really, the way they were explaining the second half showed that the play calling wasn't all that good to start with. Justin Jackson had 99 yards on 15 carries in the first half, and you outpossessed Nebraska by five minutes in that first half. They come out in the second half, Jackson gets seven carries, goes for 15 yards. My question, Jason, is why did Northwestern abandon the run when Justin Jackson was just churning? Well, I wouldn't say that they exactly abandoned the run right away. Justin Jackson had six carries for 26 yards in the third quarter. They were still trying to pound the rock and do what they had been doing the way they put up 17 points in the first half. But then all of a sudden, it wasn't working when they got the ball back for the first time in the fourth quarter. They're down 11 points, 13 minutes left. Next time they get the ball back, they're down 18. By that time, they really needed a comeback. They needed to pass the ball to get back in the game. Now, my last question for you, Jason, uh, might be a little controversial, might turn a couple of heads. Trevor Simeon has thrown more balls than any quarterback in the Big Ten this season with 265 attempts, yet he's only tossed four touchdowns, which is good for dead last. Now, for a guy whose quarterback rating has gone down every single season since he arrived at Northwestern, a guy who, frankly, we've probably seen his ceiling. We've seen as good as Trevor Simeon's going to be. Now, all that said, is it off base to say that benching him should at the very least be closely considered? And if that is a little off base, Jason, tell me why. I think it should be considered, but only if this is an injury issue for Trevor Simeon. This offense has enough issues as it is. The offensive line isn't great in pass protection. Wide receivers have struggled to get off the line of scrimmage. They've had their fair share of drops. The scheme doesn't really favor Simeon. A lot of short passes on first and second down haven't shown a lot in practice. Zach Oliver is decent. Matt, Matt Alvedi certainly doesn't look ready to take the reins. Clayton Thorson has been a nice surprise, but none of those guys seem ready to take over for Trevor Simeon. He is the man for Northwest, Northwestern at quarterback as long as he isn't injured. For as long as he'll be here, that's right, Jason. Thank you for that analysis. Always great to have you on the show. You can check out more from Jason and other people at InsideNU by checking out their website, InsideNU.com. There was one stat in this game that astounded us all here at Sports Night. Let's take a look at our stat of the week. 41.7, well, that's not a sexy number. Why is that our stat of the week? Well, folks, that was Nebraska's average starting field position in this game. The 41.7 yard line, that's 8.3 yards from midfield. If you don't want to call that a silver platter, then I'm only willing to settle for bronze because that is a hot, fresh, delectable plate of field position served up by the Cats. And as we all saw, the Huskers came to eat. Coming up next, Thought there were only four amazing years of college? Well, see why one Northwestern football player is coming back for his sixth year of eligibility. Stay tuned. At Northwestern, we're Wildcats in every way. to knock when instead you can track opportunity down and knock on its door. You might ask, 
What's the best way to identify where opportunity lives? Here's a hint. Its door is colored purple. Northwestern University. Opportunity awaits your knock. Why spend your entire life looking for some on-ramp to the road to opportunity when there's already a well-traveled path? So you may be wondering, what does that path look like? Is it paved with gold? Well, here's a hint. It's actually paved with purple. Northwestern University. Your road starts here. Welcome back to Sports Night. And Brandon, the Northwestern football defense this year has been solid, but they're also, they've got a lot of youth too. Yeah, a lot of exciting things about this unit that already looks to be meshing, a nice mix of size, strength, a lot of playmaking ability, and above all that, a reputation for having each other's backs. College football icon Lou Holtz once said, show me someone who has done something worthwhile and I'll show you someone who has overcome adversity. Despite being sidelined for over a year with an injury, one Northwestern football player refuses to give up on the game he loves most. Our own Megan O'Brien caught up with Sean McEvely, the NU defensive lineman who just won't give up. After a foot injury left senior defensive lineman Sean McEvely sitting on the sidelines for the majority of the 2013 season, he was ready to come back and make a statement for his final campaign at Northwestern. However, in late August, McEvely got news that the foot injury would keep him on the sidelines for yet another season. Last week, the NCAA granted the fifth-year senior a sixth year to come back and play for the Cats in 2015. But for McEvely, his time off the field has made him more hungry for success. I know I heal up. I can do a lot of things in football and in school, so it'll be worth it. Despite already completing a bachelor's and master's degree from Northwestern, McEvely opted to come back and play for the Wildcats in 2015 in order to help his teammates achieve their goals. I do expect to make an immediate impact and just, I mean, I'm just going to go out there and do my best and hopefully we'll achieve our goals as a team and I'll achieve my goals individually too. So. Over the last year, McEvely has spent most of his time on a bike like this, but he says his time off the field has helped him to become a student of the game. Uh, as patience is the biggest thing. Last year I might have rushed it too uh, quickly, and this year I'm just going to take it really slow. I have a lot of time. We don't start camp until next August, so I have a lot of time to recover. McEvely is a force at the line of the scrimmage when healthy, and in his sixth year, the seasoned vet expects to get back to making plays and helping the Cats win football games. McEvely expects to be ready to go by NU's 2015 season opener. With the 2014 college basketball season just a few weeks away, Chris Collins and the Wildcats finally showed off their new youthful squad at Welsh Ryan Arena, and NN Sports' Will Greer was on the scene. In its first official action of the season, the Northwestern men's basketball team held an inter-squad scrimmage on Saturday afternoon at the new and improved Welsh Ryan Arena. The younger purple team got out to an early lead and never looked back in the 20-minute scrimmage, defeating the more experienced white team 34-30. Junior guard Trey Demps led all scores with 10 points, while sophomore forward Sanjay Lumpkin led the way for the white team with 9. In their first game wearing a Northwestern uniform, freshmen Vic Law and Scotty Lindsay combined for 11 points and 9 rebounds for the victorious purple team. Senior guards Dave Sobolewski and Jershon Cobb will anchor the Wildcat backcourt, and junior Alex Ola will likely start at center for Chris Collins' squad. Junior guard Trey Demps and sophomore forward Sanjay Lumpkin are projected to round out the starting five. Underclassmen contribution will be key to this year's edition of Wildcat basketball, as the team loses close to a third of its points, minutes, and rebounds from last season. In the Columbus Dispatch's preseason media poll, Northwestern was picked second to last, ahead of only newcomer Rutgers. The team will be back in action on November 7th for an exhibition contest against McKendree one week before their season opener against Houston Baptist. For Sports Night, I'm Will Greer. Here to shed some more light on what we saw from the men's basketball team Saturday is College Hoops writer extraordinaire Jesse Kramer. Jesse, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Now, the Wildcats have seven new players, six of them freshmen. Tell me this. How will this new youth talent impact the identity of this team? Well, on the court, these guys just bring pure athleticism and talent 
that Northwestern has not had in the past. So they're going to be able to run and get out and transition more, score more points, really be able to implement the system that Chris Collins wants to use. And then also, these are guys who really want to be here and do something special for this program. Some recruits shy away from the fact that Northwestern has never made it to the NCAA tournament. These guys embrace that challenge. Now, of these new players that we have here, name a few that you believe will make, make the most impact right out of the gate, and why is that? Well, the first guy I think is Brian McIntosh. He has the potential to be a four-year starter. He's a point guard with great size at six foot three. We've also obviously got Vic Law, a top 100 recruit coming out of high school. Great length, great athleticism. He can really stuff a stat sheet. Then you also have Scotty Lindsay. We all know he's a great shooter with great range. I saw him in practice making shots out to like 30 feet about. And then, but also he's got great length, and that's going to really help him up both on the defensive end and also when it comes to rebounding. All right, well, we'll keep tabs on those guys. Jesse, thanks for joining us for this part of the analysis. If you thought you couldn't get enough of this guy, don't worry. We'll be seeing more of Jesse Kramer on desk in just a few minutes for a little game of basketball by or sell. Injuries aside, Pat Fitzgerald will now lose a player to retirement. Earlier today, Northwestern Athletics released a statement saying that redshirt sophomore Dwight White will not return to the gridiron next fall. In June, White learned that he has renal agenesis, a condition causing him to have just one kidney. The Big Ten has approved White as a medical non-counter, allowing him to keep his scholarship without counting toward the school's 85 scholarship limit. After a standout performance at the Stanford, Stanford Intercollegiate, Northwestern freshman Hannah Kim has been named Big Ten Golfer of the Week. Kim's achievement marks the third time a Wildcat golfer has won this award this fall. Coming up next, women's soccer travels east to a highly ranked Rutgers team. At Northwestern, we're Wildcats in every way. to knock when instead you can track opportunity down and knock on its door. You might ask, what's the best way to identify where opportunity lives? Here's a hint. Its door is colored purple. Northwestern University. Opportunity awaits your knock. Why spend your entire life looking for some on-ramp to the road to opportunity when there's already a well-traveled path. So you may be wondering, what does that path look like? Is it paved with gold? Well, here's a hint. It's actually paved with purple. Northwestern University, your road starts here. The 2014 Northwestern volleyball team started off hot, winning 13 of its first 15 matches. And despite a recent four-game conference losing streak, the team has an upside that would brighten any coach's day. NNN Sports' Ethan Cohen has more. The Big Ten Volleyball Freshman of the Week award has been given out eight times so far this year. Players from Northwestern have won three of them. Setter Taylor Tashima and outside hitter Simone Abbott have only been on campus for a few short months, but they're already making their presence felt, both on and off the court, says junior Caroline Nidisball. Both have been impressing all of us so much and just like their confidence levels, they're both so confident coming in and that's what we need as a team. Tashima says she and Abbott are already close and it shows up on the court as Tashima and Abbott lead the team in assists and kills respectively. We're, we're with each other all the time on the court, off the court. Um, you know, you kind of need that on a, a volleyball court. You have to be that close, you kind of know what's on the mind. But according to coach Keeler Chan, the older players on that team, including Nita Spall, have been a big help to the team's young duo. The older girls have just been 
you know, helpful and, you know, directing them and, and helping them um, hopefully be good learners. That's something we talk about. While the team has been on the fringes of the top 25 in recent years, Abbott says she's trying to bring a new mindset as the Cats try to take the next step. I want us to make it into the Sweet 16. I think we are a team that can do that. I just think that since we haven't done it before, it's hard to, like, get in the mindset that, like, we're that kind of team. And so I think it's the confidence piece and, like, having, like, that kind of attitude that we, we can beat these teams that we haven't been able to beat before in the past. Even if they don't reach their goals this year, Tashima and Abbott will be in Evanston for three more years to shape the future of the program. And for other Big Ten teams, that's a scary thought. I'm Ethan Cohen, NNN Sports. Tashima, Abbott, and the Cats will host the 13th ranked Purdue Boilermakers on Friday. Northwestern women's soccer has played poorly in conference games this year, notching only two wins in 10 tries. So traveling to New Jersey to face a 14th ranked Rutgers team, probably not the best recipe for a turnaround. But let's take a look. Rutgers hasn't lost at home this year, not once. Looking to keep that up, Erica Skrosky heads it to a homie in the box, but Lauren Clem gobbles it up no problem. We remain nil-nil. Now Addie Steiner, what a year she's had. Leading scorer for the Wildcats, trying to make something happen, has her shot blocked. Picks up some loose grass. Boy, that would never happen at Lakeside. Later in the game, Steiner takes a tumble. She would get up on her own. She was okay. Steiner would remain in the game, which is good because if she didn't, how would this have happened? Steiner breaks away on the counter and chips the keeper. Steiner's 97th minute goal would seal it. Wildcats account for the Rutgers' first home loss of the season and take down a ranked opponent for the third time this year. I'm lucky enough to be joined now by both Jesse Kramer of the Daily Northwestern and Jason Doro of Inside NU for our segment of Basketball Buy or Sell. Now you fellas know how this works. I'm gonna make a statement about Northwestern basketball and you can choose to either buy it or sell it and explain why. So to start off, we'll start off with Jesse. Buy or sell, Vic Law will average double figures in points per game this season. I'm gonna sell on that. I don't really see Vic averaging double figures this year, just because he's not really a scorer. He's gonna average more in that eight to nine point per game range, but that doesn't mean he's not gonna have a huge impact on this team. He's the type of guy who can really do a lot more than score. He can rebound, get assists, get steals and blocks. He's gonna really stuff his stat sheet, so even if he's not averaging double figures, he'll still be making a big impact. All right, Jason. Same question, Vic Law, double figures, buy or sell? I'm also going to sell here, Noah. I think there just aren't enough points to go around for Vic Law. Trey Demps and Jershon Cobb both averaging double figures last year. Alex Ola is due for more post possessions. There's just not enough points on a Northwestern team that doesn't have a great offense. And Vic Law is extremely talented. He has a lot of potential, but he's still raw. His outside game is only OK. He can finish around the rim. But I don't think double figures for him this year. All right, let's move on to statement number two. Jason, why don't you start this one off. Buy or sell, Northwestern will improve its Big Ten record from last season. I'm going to sell on that too, <clears throat> although I'm kind of pushing here. I think they get six wins, which is what they had last year. They have an extremely brutal conference schedule. Two games against Michigan State, Iowa, Wisconsin. It's a, one of the roughest schedules you can get in Big Ten, which is already the best conference in college basketball. And this team's so incredibly young with guys like Vic, Vic Law, Scotty Lindsay, Bryant McIntosh. Then you're going to need time to develop. It's not going to be this year for them. I'm thinking five or six wins in the conference. All right, now Jesse, buy or sell, and you improves their conference record from last season. I'm going to buy on that. You know, they have a very rough start, a lot of road games early on in the season. But then they finish with five of their last eight at home. And they have a young team, so they're going to get better as the season goes on naturally and progress. And with five of those last eight games at home, they have a chance, I think, to be six and nine going into that final stretch. They play Illinois, Michigan, and Iowa, and just win one out of those three to improve on last year. I could definitely see that happening. And we know that every team in the Big Ten is tough, so predicting conference records is no easy task. But then again, that's why I'm in this chair, and you guys are in those chair answering the questions. So that'll do it for this week's edition of Buy or Sell. Back to you, Brandon. Northwestern women's swimming flutter kicked off their season at home at Illinois on Friday, and they got the result. Sophomore star Lauren Abruzzo would pick up right where she left off last year, winning races. Here she takes the 1,000 freestyle, and right behind her is junior Ellen Anderson Katz looking good. On to the 100 breaststroke. Here's Julianne Kirk making up for a lot of space. Great effort to get the win and picks up some crucial points for the Cats. The 200 butterfly, no problem for Ellen Stello. She crushes the field on this one, folks. No one's near her. 
beats everyone by five and a half seconds to notch her best time as a Wildcat. Northwestern would go one, two, three again in the 50 free, and here it's Lacey Locke taking the 200 backstroke by over three seconds, followed by teammate Melissa Pastole. And boy, who knew the Cats could swim like this? The Illini would make a late push and get a few wins in the contest, but it wasn't enough as the Cats pull off a 160 to 140 victory in their opener. The women will be back in their home pool on Saturday against Oakland and UIC. Last week we were graced with his presence and he brought us his opinions in style. And now he's back. The glasses, the voice, the legend, Michael J. Stern. It's time for a Stern Talk. Thanks for having me back, guys. Northwestern's defense didn't play poorly in the second half against Nebraska. The Huskers gained 5.57 yards per play, which isn't great, but it's below Nebraska's season average of 6.83. The big problem, Big Red ran 42 plays in the half, above their usual average of 38 plays per 30 minutes. In fact, the amount of time the Wildcat defense spends on the field is beginning to look like it just might be a big problem. 513 plays have been run against Northwestern in seven games. That's over 73 plays per game, tied for ninth in the conference. Why is the Northwestern defense stuck on the field? For starters, the team has 14 sacks on the season, 1.7 per game. That's 12th in the Big Ten. Last year's Wildcats had 27 sacks, which was good for fifth in the conference. Also, Northwestern's tied for 11th in the league with 39 tackles for loss. They were fifth last year with 74. This lack of negative defensive plays means opponents' third downs are more manageable. But is it even possible to run a fast-paced offense like Northwestern does and have your defense on the field for a limited number of plays? Ask Ohio State. The Buckeye defense has been on the field for 384 plays this season. They've played one less game than Northwestern, but that doesn't explain a 129-play difference. 2.67 sacks per game and 6.83 tackles for loss per game will. Northwestern's defensive mission next weekend should be simple. Get after the quarterback and get off the field. Gentlemen. Mr. Stern never fails great stuff. We are going to take a break, uh, but what, what's wrong, Noah? I think I'm glued to my seat. Well, that's a good problem to have because Plays of the Week is coming up next. Y'all should do the same. At Northwestern, we're Wildcats in every way. Why spend your entire life looking for some on-ramp to the road to opportunity when there's already a well-traveled path? So you may be wondering, what does that path look like? Is it paved with gold? Well, here's a hint. It's actually paved with purple. Northwestern University, your road starts here. Welcome back to Sports Night. It's the fourth quarter of our broadcast, Crunch Time. Yes, Noah, and as we know, the only thing on any athlete's mind in the fourth quarter, in the waning seconds of a game, with the season on the line after giving everything they have, have I done enough to make plays of the week? Roll it, baby. We're going to start on the court with the new look Wildcats, a scrimmage game at the Welsh. Sanjay Lumpkin's going to get the ball, drive it baseline, and plow. Wow. That might be a Southwest Airlines commercial soon, because if I'm Johnny Vassar here, I just want to get away. That brings us to number two, Amir Abdullah. Fourth quarter of the homecoming game, and your boy goes off. A 50-yard run, holding down the turbo button the whole way. He put the team on his back, though. Hardly touched by any defenders. That led to one of four Abdullah touchdowns. And number one, Justin Jackson, the freshman, bounces it outside. Whoop! 
and shakes a Wimpley tackler. That's going to get him a touchdown. He is having himself a year, folks. Well, folks, that's the show. Glad you paid us a visit. Noah, I hope you're unstuck because we, we got to go. Can I be completely honest with you? Please. I was never stuck. I just wanted them to stay tuned. Uh, do you think it worked? Uh, I think so. I don't know. D did, did it, it work? work? Hey, hey guys, what, what are our numbers looking like back there? What? We beat Sports Center. It worked. <laughs> Stay glued for another seven days, guys. Halloween edition of Sports Night coming to you next week. Watch the show again and see exclusive content on YouTube and check out our new website, nnntv.org. Also, follow us on Twitter at NNN Sports. That's it for us. For Brandon Wilson, I'm Noah Fromson. Have a good night.